We use the Gaussian plume dispersion model to predict concentrations of a pollutant downwind of a source where it's being emitted from. And it involves applying a mass balance model. Let's say that we have the ground surface and we have some stack or chimney from which we are emitting pollution of some sort. And the wind is going from left to right. And our emissions come out of the stack and they spread as they move downwind. I might be interested in what is the concentration that this person is exposed to at a certain distance downwind. So this person is at position X. The Gaussian or normal distribution is used to describe the how the concentrations vary in space, and it describes the crosswind spreading of the plume in the sideways direction and in the vertical direction. So if we have an elevated source, that's height h above the ground, and we'll look at this uh, emissions from here kind of at one point in time, and maybe they look like that, and maybe at another point in time, the plume kind of looks like that, and a later point in time, it looks something like that. So it kind of varies over time, but if we kind of do a time lapse or look at a kind of a time average, we'd see that this plume shape falls in this, in this general area. And we can go ahead and plot the concentration as a function of height in this plume. And we would find that the curve would look something like this, where it's highest in the center, and then it falls off to either side. So it's high right here along the center line of the plume and decreases as you move away from the center. And this, this spread here, kind of where the, the edge of the plume is described by a parameter called sigma sub z. Let's talk about the Gaussian or normal distribution using an example. Maybe we have an exam where the scores, the mean score was 70 and the standard deviation sigma was 10. The frequency of any given score then is described by this function, f of x equals one over sigma times two pi to the one half times the exponential of negative x, the score of interest, minus x naught, the mean score, all squared, divided by two times sigma squared. So if I go ahead and plot that function, I would find that the curve looks something like this, where the peak is at 70. And then if I go plus or minus 10 on each side, so about there and there, between 60 and 80, this is plus or minus one sigma, and that gives me 66% of the area. So this area between 60 and 80 66 percent of the people on this test got some score between 60 and 80. And then if I go out another standard deviation to 50 and 90, well this is plus or minus two sigmas and that gives me 95 percent of the total area under the curve. So now if I look at all the area under the curve between 50 and 90, that's 95 percent of it. Depending on meteorological conditions, we could have a small sigma or a large sigma. So if sigma is small, then we have a fairly narrow plume. And if sigma is large, it's gonna be more spread out and more diluted. The mathematical form of the Gaussian plume equation for an elevated source without reflection, 
This means we're not concerned about what happens at the ground. We're imagining there's no ground there and pollution can just spread infinitely past the ground. So this is not realistic, but it'll show us a connection between the normal distribution equation on the previous slide and what we eventually end up using for the Gaussian plume dispersion model. But it is C at XYZ, so the concentration at some point in space XYZ is equal to Q, which is the emission rate not the volume flow rate, and this use of Q is particular to the Gaussian plume equation, divided by two pi u, sigma y, sigma z, all times the exponential of minus one half times y squared over sigma y squared plus z minus h squared over sigma z squared. This cartoon illustrates how the plume spreads as it goes downwind and it shows us that Gaussian or normal distribution. Uh, the emissions are coming from a stack, an orange stack in the upper left hand corner uh, at height A and then there's some plume rise taking the center line of the plume up to height B and then we get to some, if we look at some point in time, some plane, the first one here that I'm outlining, we see that in the the crosswind direction, kind of side to side, that's illustrated by the red line. The highest concentration is along the center line and it falls off to either side. Likewise, for the vertical distribution, we see there's a kind of normal distribution that describes that too, again, with a peak at the center and things falling off as you move away from that. And then once you move farther downwind to this second plane, outlined um, in green now, you can see that uh, the plume has spread out, so that red line has kind of flattened out, and then the, the blue line has too, and then there's something happening at the ground that we haven't accounted for yet, but we'll talk about that in a future video. This is another illustration showing the idea of a Gaussian plume, uh, where you have a source, uh, that cylinder, which is has a height h sub s, the height of the stack, and then the plume rises to height h, and then you can see as the plume moves downwind, we have some wind, direct, wind velocity u, and at different points as it moves downwind, they've drawn these curves, which show kind of the distribution of the concentration in the crosswind direction, uh, side to side, and then also in the uh, kind of vertical direction up and down here.